So the main purpose of this video was to try out an experiment that was given to me. Essentially to mix lead, melted lead and anhydrous copper sulfate to make gold. I don't know if it was just a amalgam that looks like gold or real gold, if it was actual transmutation. I figured at least I'd give it a shot and see how it works. Now, long story short, it didn't work for me and I'm not saying it doesn't work because realistically, you know, I'm not very experienced in melting metal. This is really one of the first few times that I you know, got this far in it, but at least I wasn't able to do it. So if, if you know the correct method, do tell me, otherwise this is what I did. So firstly, this is a failed method, but I um, heated the copper sulfate in order to remove its water, as you can see here. Secondly, I then melted some lead in a little crucible and I tried to mix the two. Now of course the problem is that the heat was not high enough to really melt any of them. The lead did melt but it didn't turn molten so you know you really can't say that it melted all that much. That was the first experiment. In the second experiment I transformed this bucket into a miniature forge by using a pipe connected to a hairdryer and the pipe leads into the bottom of the bucket and it's your coal and just scrap wood uh, fired forge and the outer heat protection was a heat proof mortar along with a polyfiller. Now in I guess you know, seeing back onto it the polyfiller didn't exactly work uh, it actually did work for one round, but it started to ash and crumble and maybe it wasn't thick enough uh, But it did kind of burn to an ash, so don't use a polyfiller. Instead probably just a regular cement with a heat proof mortar It'd be better, you know, a sand, a regular sand and lime cement <laughs> that doesn't matter now, if I had more I would fill it in more and make this area smaller but still the pipe comes out comes through there as you can see let this dry and then I'll show you what we do with it as you can see it's all dry it's very jaggy and it's almost sharp actually these bits and pieces very tough and um, it's all good now it's ready to you know to cook with and what I have, I have this little, you can see here, it's made out of um, calcium. This is, yeah, or an, or maybe a different kind of ash you could use as well. It's probably bone ash, calcium. Now, the problem with this is that, it, see how small it is? So what's going to happen is this could tip over as the coals start to heat or something. What I have is, is a cup. I've got a cup here and I've got this... Uh, plastic film which I'll put under it under the cup or, or in the cup and then I'll have calcium oxide which is basically just bone that's been minced up into powder and it's been hell heated to get all the water out that's why when you mix water into calcium oxide it makes calcium hydroxide because it soaks it up and then it becomes um, invulnerable to water essentially and that's why a brick you can't wet a brick all that much. You can wet it a little bit and wet the mortar a little bit. Same way with the, the mortar here. It's just sand and um, probably some kind of calcium oxide and then and then maybe some plasticizer or whatever. And we've got the uh, polyfiller 
high temperature mortar and I think mixing those three together in a ratio of mostly putty a bit of mortar and not too much or maybe maybe half and half see it I took it out of the cup it's been drying for about two hours two three hours it hasn't dried much but I didn't want it to um, you know cure in the cup all right so here it is after air drying now it's a little crumbly if I pick at it so I think after heating it it should be nicer here is our substance lead and uh, copper sul anhydrous copper sulfate which I'm going to be putting into here just like so and uh, what else we have is I've got coal I'm gonna put the coal in here and as you can see here we have our hair dryer turn it on blows air very good Still hot because of the coals. If I sample, uh, most of them here, yeah, some of them are still haven't burnt, but uh, still a little hot. But you can see the edge around here is kind of um, turned to ash, and I can, like there, I can tear that off, for example. So the um, the earthen material they used is a failure but it did work for you know i could probably use this for another two three maybe times you can also see that it didn't melt the metal um which is a shame but i think my cup that we used was too thick so after two failed experiments i invested in a blowtorch one of those small butane ones and this one actually worked this one actually was able to melt the metal except what i found is that the copper and anhydrous copper sulfate when heated long enough sat on the top of the molten lead so you had molten lead at the bottom and molten copper at the top. It was very interesting. And they wouldn't amalgamate. They wouldn't mix no matter what. It was very strange to see two molten substances that did not want to mix. Well, well, interesting experiment. Either way, they didn't amalgamate into some kind of gold-colored metal. And they didn't amalgamate into gold. So I'm not sure how to do it. Um, yeah, anyway, if, if I had something I did wrong, do tell. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed watching these experiments.
So, to wrap things up, let's look at our final result. Here we can see in the outer edges you have that copper, that kind of dark copper color because it probably is some kind of copper. Fairly crude and pure, but it is what it is. And in the middle, and probably at the bottom, you have that lead. And it's kind of uh, got that petually rainbowy color for whatever reason. If you scrape it, it is just pure, like there's a little bit in the middle. It's just pure lead. It did not um, amalgamate at all. I, I remember I could see it boiling, the copper boiling on top and lead boiling on the bottom. It was really interesting, even at high heat, they did not merge or forge together. Maybe if I mix something together, I did it a different way or use more heat. I don't know. I don't know enough about metals, hence why we're doing these experiments. And eventually I'll learn. An interesting thing is this is the, uh, and this shows the three stages of, uh, you know, a metal. Well, you know, not... Look, I'll just explain what I mean. All right, first we see that kind of white-ish stuff, which is the anhydrous copper sulfate. Next we see the blue, which is a copper sulfate, and you can kind of see little bits of, like, orangey... You kind of see orangey bits. I think that is a copper oxide. Um, I don't know if it would be actual copper metal. Probably not, just copper oxide. So that's kind of how you can see that the more flame you... You know, firstly it starts off as a copper sulfate, then you add more flame and it turns into the anhydrous stuff, which is that pale white, and then you add more flame and it oxidizes, and I guess you add more flame <laughs> until it's molten, and it turns into a metal, a metallic state. So it's kind of like the two states, you know, the crystal metallic, and then I guess four states, crystal, anhydrous crystal, um oxide metal and there's you know i don't know i guess that's pretty much all i can really think of state wise and i guess this video showed the transformation unintendingly but it did <laughs> um, another interesting thing for whatever you know maybe interested in this this is the original stuff that i was using that i tried to heat with that forge you can see it's really or it's really green. Um, I'll try to get the camera focused. It's green. It's got little bits of copper oxide and little beads of lead in there. Very impure. It's probably got some of that polyfiller in there. Um, you can see, yeah, it's been through a rough ride. This stuff looks a little bit more clean. Anyway, that's it for the video. Hope you learned something. I learned a few things, I guess. Um, course check the links in the description if you're interested in social or commercial things and have a nice day